Hey guys, it's Audrey and welcome back to my channel. This week's video is on something that I've been thinking about doing for a long time, but honestly I've kind of been a little bit intimidated as in I didn't really know where to start. I tried making an intro like Dan Mace. Dan is an incredible filmmaker. One thing that really stood out to me from his videos for some reason was his intro. When I saw it, I was like, what, how did he do that? <laughs> I think copying has a very negative connotation attached to it. Looking at something that they've made and trying to recreate it yourself can be very challenging and you can learn a lot in the process, but you have to be like smart about it. You can't claim other people's work as your own. I just like to do it sort of as an exercise. It's definitely interesting and challenging and I'm gonna bring you guys through the process of me making this video. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, this is Dan's intro. So yeah, if you like slow it down and go through it frame by frame, you can see how much detail there is and how literally every frame was tweaked. The first thing I did was look for the music. Even if I'm filming something like B-roll, I always make sure I check the music first. That's always my number one priority, so that's what I did for this video too. One thing that I really like about Epidemic Sound is that when you download the music, you have the option to download the stems which is super useful, especially for someone like me because I love to go and like change the music up. Once I found this song and decided that this is what I was going to use, I chopped it up and made it into a short like 10 to 12 second bit. I kind of tried to make sure that there was a like calmer beginning and then a drop sort of and then a calmer ending. The next part of Dan's intro is when he paints the word brew, brew, bruh, brew. If you guys have been following along, you know that I am currently in Shanghai, China, doing an internship, and I didn't know where I was going to find acrylic paint. I'm currently searching for paint, or just something. At the beginning of Dan's intro, there's that one sequence where he writes brew. I don't know where to find paint. Everything's like minuscule here, like mini, mini, minified. The only thing I've really been able to find is this. It's like a painting, like traditional, I don't know what this is called, set. So I... <laughs> like, what is... This is the closest thing I could find. So we've got this ink. We've got two brushes. Do not know what this is, but we've got it. Welcome to my bathroom. This is very strange. Sometimes I wonder, like, the, the things, the things I've done for YouTube videos, like, how I'm gonna do it is I'm going to, I'm gonna draw, like, a little stroke a little bit, and then stop, take a picture, draw a little bit more. These are what the pictures looked like after I took them in the bathroom, before dropping them into Lightroom, and basically just playing with the contrast in B and W make it stand out a little bit more. These are what they look like after Lightroom. And then after that, I dropped them into Photoshop and tried to math, kind of overlay like the previous one with an original photo, which then I used the quick selection tool to just get those black lines selected before masking everything else out. So that was just on a perfectly white background. This took a lot of time. <laughs> And then these are what they looked like after I was done with that, before I eventually dropped them into Premiere, where it was a bit, little bit more straightforward. I sort of just compared mine to Dan's and listened to my music and decided what type of punch in and punch outs I wanted my flame to do. I also added this animation of a flame in the background. Another thing that Dan did was the newspaper animation. So it starts out all scrunched up, and then it kind of gets flattened out and it's sort of like shifting in the background. I'm in my apartment now and I have these things. I don't really know how I'm going to shoot that because I don't have that sort of rig. So I guess I'm just going to remember where I stand and do it over and over again. Start by making the background and having it flat on the ground and then afterwards I'll scrunch it up because that makes more logical sense. So this is what they looked like before um, I put them into Lightroom where I brightened them up a little bit more. 
Um, I was, I didn't actually film the Photoshop process, but it was very similar to the flames where I sort of selected the newspaper and put them on a white background before putting them into Premiere. And again, sort of comparing to what Dan was doing and just adjusting it so it's a little bit more my style. Oh yeah, okay, so then there's his like outline that folds into a coin and then goes into the coin dispenser and then there's the machine. The main techniques he uses here is like keyframing, I'm pretty sure anyway. And so I didn't want to copy him completely, so I was trying to think of what I could do that was like a little bit different. I tried to stay on the same theme of like an electronics. I needed something with a screen, so for some reason my brain just jumped to a Nintendo. I don't know why, but it turned out pretty interesting and it's a little bit different. I ended up putting in some random Mario footage in the background and keyframing myself into the game. First, I just went into Photoshop, got this picture of me that I thought was similar to Dan's and caught myself out of it before messing with the keyframing a lot in Premiere. This isn't the whole process, this is just sort of showing you a little bit of the keyframing I did with the Mario footage, but there's a lot of keyframing. I also forgot to mention how I made the eye animation, which is sort of my replacement for the mouth in um, Dan's sequence, but basically I it's just a lot of keyframing. There's a bunch of, I downloaded a bunch of glitch overlays and kind of messed with those before um, also masking just the eye part with a certain glitch. And then later I made the eye pink. Also, if you guys want to see me like go into more detail about anything I made in this intro or talk about in this video, let me know because I feel like there's a ton of little details I can't possibly get into in just one video without making it like an hour long. So yeah, let me know in the comments. So I said I was copying Dan's intro, but it's a lot of improv, taking inspiration from what he did and using the same techniques, but transforming it in a way that's more, that's unique to me. For the next part, there's this hyperlapse of a street and it goes into like a TV on Dan and then there's like the whole TV turny thing. I'll have it up on screen so you know what I'm talking about, but like screen turns and it's like his face is going crazy and then there's the weird background. This part was pretty interesting to make. As you can see, there is a lot of moving pieces and this is why I was saying like I could make a whole other video on just little bits of this video because it's just a lot going on. <laughs> So you can see like the, let's start back at the beginning. First I decided to have like a colorful background similar to what Dan was doing. Um, I didn't have real paint so I decided I just kind of made something in Photoshop going along the same lines of what Dan did. This is before by the way I put in the hyperlapse footage. Um, yeah, I just, I shot that last so it's just empty right now but anyway. And then it shifts to this background thing that I found as like a free it was just like a YouTube thing and I downloaded it and I changed the colors so it was a bit more red because obviously and um <laughs> these two little flames on the sides were a pain in the butt here's some footage of me filming that hyperlapse and explaining a little bit more about what I'm doing so right now I'm just kind of walking down this street going back and forth across the street and taking pictures every once in a while. I don't really know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's what I'm doing. So, after all of that, all of those different steps, all those little pieces, here is my Dan Mace inspired intro. I hope you guys like it. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm sure I'll go I'll be tweaking it as time goes on. This has been such a learning curve like creative challenge of having to try and recreate something but also make it my own but use the same techniques and stick to the original theme of dance. I highly recommend that you guys do something similar. Copying other people's work, if you do it right, I think can really be helpful to help teach you new things. Make sure you give credit where credit's due. Honestly, that's the biggest thing. I hope you guys liked this video and found it interesting and learned something new. I'm feeling a lot better, so I'm super excited. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys this Friday with another new video. Bye!